Hi guys, this is Talking Blue. I'm with Matthew, and we have a special guest today, Ashton. Um, so today, our episode, we're going to be focused on again off-season moves. You know, obviously Daniel Jones' Saquon Barkley contract rumors are all over the, the headlines, and the New York Post is going crazy with it. But the draft is also coming up, and you know, combines are coming up. So we'd also like to get in depth. A little, bit about, a little bit about some of our draft prospects who are really interested for the Giants to pick. So I think first, you know, we, we have to talk about Daniel Jones. So Ashton, special guest, tell me a little bit about Daniel Jones. Tell me a little bit about some of the rumors and contracts. What's your opinion on it? Um, I can tell you right now, uh, I think his agent is just, uh, you know, making stuff up. I don't think he's going to get $45 million. I think that's just a number out there uh, to try to push that number up a little bit more, but I don't see him getting any more than $30 million from any team. I believe the best offer he's going to get is going to be from the Giants, and I would estimate that to be about a four-year, $120 million deal, $90 million guaranteed, more towards the back end of the contract, uh, with him being able to make about five, $10 million extra year uh, with incentives. Yeah. But, yeah, so I guess... um. You know, what you've seen in the past is cap is going up every year. So it's great to push it back. And Saquon, too, like you see they did with Nick Chubb, pushing it back, that he almost has a no cap in it. Same with Patrick Mahomes. There's always ways around it. And if you could negotiate with your guys, get the proper proper things, it could work well. Matthew, I want you to talk a little bit about what's your take. Did they don't really ask for $45 million or is that his age just playing here, Matthew? Take it away from there. Well, um, I've been hearing reports about him requesting $45 million per year, like all over Instagram and Twitter. But like, I saw a post on Twitter, I forget who it was, I think it was Fireside Giants, the account. But um, they said that like it got leaked that his agent, or um, that it, he did not actually ask for eighty for like $45 million. His agent was like trying to make him look bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you hit it right, the nail right on the head. Like, I don't see Daniel Jones as a player when you watch him play. He's not a cocky, showy player. He doesn't even celebrate when he scores a touchdown. He pats his teammates on the back, and they go together. You don't see him celebrating. I don't see him being spiteful like that. Ashton, I see, see you got some emotion, opinion on that. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, he is not a spiteful player. I mean, I think he's going to blossom into a, a great QB. Don't know if he'll ever reach that Patrick Mahomes level. It's going to be insanely tough to, for anybody to ever do the Mahomes or Montana Brady level. Um, but $45 million I think, is, is like I said, I think it's a number that they're putting out there, and I think it's smart because maybe you might get $35 million, whereas before you got 30 So you're making that extra $5 million. Um, I definitely agree with that because, look, let's talk about right now, we're looking at the market. Aaron Rodgers is asking for $60 million. These quarterbacks, Derek Carr, asking for $35 million. And you're seeing all these quarterbacks. They see what, else, what everyone else is getting it. They want that money. And let's talk a little about Saquon. And so, you know, we've heard you want big money. And I was reading something today, and I want to hear your guys' opinion on it. You know, a, a person commented on Saquon going, you know it, I want to be a giant. Like, everyone knows that. And then the guy goes, well, if you want to be a giant, take a, take a low deal. And that's a good point. You want to be a giant, don't, don't get crazy with us with the money. So, Matthew, I want you to start us off. What do you think is fair with Saquon Barkley? Do you let him walk? Do you sign him? What's the contract? Well, um, Saquon Barkley, I know like he does want to be a giant, and I do genuinely believe him. But like, um, I know he says he wants Christian McCaffrey money, which is like sixteen million dollars per year. It's not bad, but um, honestly, that's going to be a lot of money to like for the Giants, and we're also need some other money to like extend, like sign some other free agents, or like if we make a big trade this off season, we're gonna need money for that. And like so, Matt. You know. So the question is, do you resign him, and if you resign him, franchise tag your contract. What's your contract looking like? So I I want him staying definitely. Like he's my he's one of my favorite players okay. in the Giants. Like top three favorite. Um, I want him staying. Um, I would say give him like I don't know exactly how many years, but like probably like thirteen million dollars per year. Okay, so not franchise tag is the point. Right. Again, right? Okay, Ashton, I, I know you have a different opinion on this. I want to hear your opinion on this. I do. I, I think you let him walk. Uh, I love Saquon. Met him in person. Great guy. First of all, $16 million for any running back is absolutely absurd. In my I opinion. totally agree on that. Yeah. yeah that they get hurt. They, they, injuries. Yeah. Tore his ACL already once. Hurt that same knee again. 
I, I say you let him walk. You, there's plenty of running backs you could get in the late rounds. I mean, you've seen it in the past five years with Austin Eckler, uh, Michael Carter, James Robinson, right? All these guys have been coming in those late rounds. Jonathan Taylor in the second round, Derrick Henry in the third round, right? These running backs, it's no longer you have to be a first round. Yeah. And be in those late rounds and still be an effective player. Isaiah Pacheco, perfect example from the last year's draft class, fifth round draft pick, produced uh, for the Super Bowl winning team. So I yeah, right. and we we were we're based out in New Jersey, and we all were rooting for Isaiah Pacheco at the back Rutgers University. Yes. great guy. Um, so let's let's transfer a little bit over in the draft. So I think that's what we really want to be getting at. Um, so I'm going to start with Ashton on this one. Name a player, name his value, and name what what round you think the Giants should take him in. Um, I think my favorite player uh, out of this draft, Drew Sanders, um, middle linebacker. Uh, have nine and a half sacks as a middle linebacker, be able to play that coverage, uh, and he could come off the edge as well. Um, that's just such a unique talent. Um, I don't want to compare him to Michael Parsons, but I'm going to compare him to Michael Parsons. Hey, yeah. I can see him in Parsons uh, come to college kind of the same. Big sack machine guy. Uh, is good at coverage. Still needs to improve a little bit in that category. Um, but, you know, did get a few pass breakups, did pressure quarterback a lot. I yeah. think he was a little bit on that coverage. He's going to be insanely deadly. So, you know, you, uh, he was the Alabama transfer to Arkansas. He was impressive. And, I'd say he's a second to third round guy. I don't think you take him the first round now. You've seen my draft where he is, but I just don't see he has that value. So Matthew, I want you, I want you to name another guy. Who are you picking in the first round, Matthew? Who are you taking? Twenty fifth pick overall. Let's see it, Matthew. Well, it kind of depends on like what the Giants do this off season. Let's go. Let's first. just go. Uh, let's just go. What, what's your opinion right. right now? So, like, there's, like, a lot of players I have on my mind. Um, like, it varies for, like, different positions. Um, some guys I think would be good. Um, like, let's say, like, we're talking about um, middle linebackers. I would want Trenton Simpson, the kid out yeah. of Clemson. Clemson. He's great. I watch his film. Like, he can cover, and, like, he's really good. Like, I think he could pull up, bring, like, a lot to the defense. Wide receivers – Um. Let's see. So Jordan Addison is a name that sticks out to me. Like I'm a huge Ducks fan. Like I'm an, I'm an Oregon Ducks fan. I'm I've mentioned this before in the past, but like yeah, um I've seen him play. He is um a threat. I think he will be like an early first round pick. I have him going to the Titans, but um we'll see. Um who else is good? Um I think Jay, I'm an Alabama fan. I think Jalen Hyde has to be a mention here. Five <laughs> touchdowns against yeah. Alabama. Yeah. I think I we could pick him up in the second round actually. Yeah. Oh, receivers, third round. I uh, don't know if you guys know who he is, but Rashi Rice. Uh, yes. Oh, I know you're talking about, yeah. Six, yes, SMU. Yeah. Six he's three, good. Um, can't go wrong with that. Uh, yeah, he was one of those underrated uh, guys I was reading in mock draft. So, I, I love your guys' input. You know, we have on Matthew's side, I, I think first round, and I think I'm going to go with Matthew there. You know, it's not the most known thing, but I think I'm going to learn that. I think I'm Go with my man, Trenton Simpson, Clemson University. I just, he's scary good. And I think the difference is that you can, he's a steal for the first round. And I think it still gives you the option for the second, third, fourth round. Take your receivers, your running back, maybe another middle linebacker because that position is really uncertain. Cornerbacks, I think it's a good first round pick. Ashton, what's your input on that? I, I, I couldn't agree more, uh, especially with the way we play. We play a 4-3, sometimes 3-4, three, uh, usually 4-3 and nickel. Uh, so you have four linemen, three linebackers, or in the nickel, you'd have more uh, linebackers and D-backs. So it, it never hurts to take those two linebackers. And that way, if Simpson sucks or if Sanders sucks, one of them, you have a really good shot on being good, and if both of them are good, that's an even bonus. Then you could change up your defense even more and play those four linebacker sets. Yeah, uh, really be deadly and have Thibodeau and Ujolari off the edge with those two guys on the middle. Um, that is insanely ta- uh, insanely deadly. Another guy I could see, tight end Michael Mayer. He'd um, be good. Then, yeah. And two mm-hmm. tight ends is a, de- a deadly two tight end quarter is really really big in the. 
Oh, tight ends, uh, very important. And two tight end approach is insane. We saw it a few years ago, Ben Watson, Rob Gronkowski. Um, so having that second tight end option good. I also like Kelly Ringo, cornerback, uh, George. Yeah. yeah, he's a good I option. Think, I think um, I think you're looking at the Giants, you know, a guy like Daniel Bellinger sticks out. You know, I, I was reading something, you know, but I think I want to talk about next season. I want to talk about some breakout play predictions for the New York football Giants. And I think I'm going to give you my list. You guys can also make your list. I'm going to go Thibodeau. I think he's going to have a breakout season. I think he's going to be really good. And, um, I think, I think you're, it's very good. Yeah, I think who else? I'm going to go Bellinger, too. I, I think something special about him. And I really do think he'll be special. So just one more honoring mention. One more thing I want to mention. I think we all could be happy that Zeke may be leaving the NFC East. I yes. think we're happy. Uh, no, I'd be a lot happier with Pollard. I think Pollard's more explosive at this point. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't want to see Zeke feeding himself anymore. It makes me but, sick. Yeah, Zeke leaving uh, is cool. Is, you know, he does yeah. Special place in my heart, though, is an Ohio State alum. But, uh, okay. Right. Yeah. I'm very so, happy not going to be hurting the Giants anymore. So. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. So, Matt, I want to hear your breakout player predictions for next season. All right. So, um, I, I'm going to say Evan Neal's one of them. Um, yes. Andrew Thomas, well, no, never mind, my bad. I was going to say, like, comparing to Andrew Thomas, like, you know, Andrew Thomas had, like, that bad rookie season, and um, the next season he was decent. Now he's, like, the best offensive tackle in the NFL. I think yes. Evan Neal can follow that same path. I think another breakout um, player candidate, um, Wondell Robinson. Um, yes, so underrated. People do not realize that skill set. Yeah, he's small, his speed doesn't hop off, but he, he was slippery. He was talented. Play is big. Yeah. So, uh, I like the predictions, Matt. Ashton, any any other guys you got to add into that? Yeah, you said Kayvon. Uh, I don't really, you know, um, I think he already is good. I mean, you, you look at the stats and people are like, hey, he wasn't that great. But, you know, we talked about before the air. I mean, you, you, you compare everything he did and he was getting double teamed and held and he still got to the quarterback. Forced and the pressures. The pressures. And, and the count. Pressures. But also opening up the game for his teammates to get into the backfield, and that's huge. Um, another breakout candidate I have, I mean, I, I have a few, but I mean, I love Cordell Flott. I think he's only going to improve. Oh, yeah, Dane, he's going to be good next year. Uh, Dane Belton really started to see towards the end of the season uh, just what he was capable of doing. Um, yeah. Really excited to see where he elevates his game, especially with the guy uh, like Wink Martindale uh, on that defensive side of the ball. Yeah, so I, I think I think we hit almost everything. I think that this is another great episode we created, and I think another thank you from me, Matthew, and our guest Ashton. We we love the support we're getting. Um, we hope it continues. And I I guess any closing uh, statements, Matthew, you go first. Any closing statements? One thing. Um, with the Giants getting receiver, I think like it's going to most likely be a trade either. One of these four guys, like who sticks out to me the most, T. Higgins, Brandon Ayuk, DJ Moore, and Deontay Johnson. No order, like how bad I want them. But like, I remember like a few weeks ago, I was on Twitter, I was reading, like someone said, like, oh, the Giants should um trade for T. Higgins and give him ninety two million dollars for four years. I was like, you're out of your mind. Like, it's fine if they get T. Higgins, but like, we're not giving him ninety two million dollars because like, yeah, that's, you, that's crazy, right? That's quarterback and, money, and, like, you saw what happened with Kenny Galladay. We gave him that ridiculous contract, all for him to do absolutely nothing. And yeah. I'll explain why you can't compare the two, because Kenny Galladay has historically had a history of injuries and has historically had that almost nonchalant effort about him uh, throughout his entire career, where Higgins is going to be coming in a lot younger than Galladay came in. Um, I don't agree. Think- to pay him $92 million. Um, And, yes, he got injured a little bit this year, two concussions, whatever. Right. Um, but I just think there's just something about T. Higgins' game that is just so important for the Giants. But I think another guy that I think would be just as good, um, especially for, for the Giants' fit, you know, we like to sometimes go deep, but really those middle-of-the-field plays, Juju Smith-Schuster. Yeah, he'd be um, good. Yeah. But, like, 
be able to do it Mahomes, and I just think he he would fit the Giants even better. And I think we could bring Juju back to what he did in 2018, 20. I think I think Juju did have his best season statistically. I think he wasn't the main show in Kansas City, and you can't because you got Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes. You're going to take up right. a line of the spotlight. And yeah, so I, I think that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah and I'm also gonna... like what I was saying earlier about like um, T Higgins, like when you give someone that much money, like. You saw what happened with Kenny Gotta, like how that fell through, like that went up yeah. in flames. And also, like you never give a wide receiver that much money. And also, um, I'm not saying T. Haynes is going to do what Kenny Gotta did, like show up to practice, just try to collect a paycheck and then get out of there. Like I don't think he's going to exactly do. That. I think he's going to be really good. But like, you don't want um to give a wide receiver that much money though. It's too big yeah. of a risk. Like you saw what happened with Kyler Murray, like. They gave him that ridiculous contract for him to underperform. Not saying like he has like no work ethic, but like he hasn't been doing great this season. He had a down year, but I think next year he'll be good. Yeah, that's right. Two other two other quick guys. I think they should get DJ Moore uh, if they can bring him in for the right price. Yes. I don't really know if Carolina is going to get rid of him. Uh, there was talks about them getting rid of him. I don't really see it, but maybe they do. If they do, who is your other guy? And then uh, another guy, and it depends on if he gets re. Undrafted free agent, six foot four, Arizona Cardinal receiver, Greg Dorsey. Uh, if you yes, Greg Dorsey played uh, exceptionally well in that offense, and it was really hard to because, like you said, Kyle Murray had a down year, and they ended up having to play Trace McSorley and these other guys and Colt McCoy, and yet he he still excelled. Now, granted, he wasn't the number one option, so it wasn't going against the number one corner. But I feel like for the Giants, he wouldn't be that number one guy either. So I think he'd fit in, again, very well with the system that Mike Kafka uh, produces. I, I think we had a lot of good takes. And I think, you know, we're, we're, we love doing this. We love keeping up posting the content. And we hope you guys keep on supporting us. And I, I really think that's it. So this is Luke, Matthew, and Ashton. And this is it. Go Big Blue. All right. Go, go, go. See you guys later. Bye.